In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve absolute value inequalities like greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So if you want to test yourself, go ahead and write down these problems here and attempt them on your own. We're going to go into a little bit of explanation and then we're going to get to solving these problems. So the first thing we want to look at is when you take the absolute value of a number, like for example, the absolute value of negative four or the absolute value of positive four, when you take the absolute value, it always gives you a positive number. And what this is representing is what is the distance from zero. So you could be four units to the right, or you could be four units to the left. So that has a distance of four units from zero, right? Now, if we take it up a notch with getting into inequalities here, if we have the absolute value of x is greater than four, now what we're doing is we're saying the distance from zero is more than four units away. So if you're here at zero and you're greater, so that not equal to four, but greater than four, you're further away from zero, okay, by four units, or further than four units away to the left, so of zero, which would be negative to the left of negative four. Now, if it's less than, x is less than four, less than means that the distance is closer to zero, so you would be looking at something more like this, where you're from negative four to positive four in between there because you're basically closer to zero than four units away. So that's important to keep in mind as we go through this that greater than is uh, further away. And you can think of this greater than, a lot of teachers will uh, explain it this way. They'll say greater as a way of remembering it. So it's like, uh, or means that in math actually means union or both. Like in everyday language, or means like I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. It's like one or the other. But in math, or actually means both. So it means you're in, it includes all of these points as well as all of these points. Now, when you look at uh, less than, okay, you can think of this as an easy way of remembering. You can say less than. See how it kind of sounds like and? But less than, okay, and and means intersection. So and means intersection in math. And when you think about intersection, you can think about something like, like this, where you're less than four and greater than negative four, and the and is really the overlap or the intersection. So that's why we're right here in between negative four and positive four. So you can keep that in mind as we're going through this. We're going to look at some other examples before we get to those two that uh, we talked about at the very beginning. Take a look at this one. The absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 1. So we know that when it's a greater than or equal to, it's going to be an or type of problem. And when you think about the distance being greater than one unit from zero, you're thinking about, okay, greater than or equal to one or less than or equal to negative one. So what we do algebraically is we split this up into two inequalities. 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to one or 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 1. And then we just solve them uh, separately. We just add 3 to both sides, divide by 2. And over here, we add 3 to both sides and divide by 2. So that means that we're getting x is greater than or equal to 2 or x is less than or equal to 1. So when we graph this final result here on the number line, make sure you put your numbers in order from lowest to highest. It's x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 2. And so you can either write it like this, or you can show it graphically on the number line like, like that. But it's a set of solutions. It's not just like one answer like x equals 5 or something like that. It's really like a whole group or set of answers. Okay, so now if we take a look at this problem, we have the absolute value of 5x plus 1 is less than or equal to 6. Now remember, when it's less than, we think of it as an and type problem. It's an intersection type problem. But we can do that same process we talked about in the last problem where you split it up into two inequalities. 5x plus 1 is less than or equal to 6, and 5x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 6. So notice I flip the inequality sign and I change this number to the opposite. So if it's positive, I make it negative. Now all we have to do is just solve each of these individually. And you can see x is less than or equal to 1. And solve this other one. Divide both sides by 5 to get x by itself. 
and we're getting x is greater than or equal to negative 7 fifths. Now when it's an and type problem, what you can do is you can actually put these inequalities together. So I'm going to put x is less than or equal to 1, and I'm going to take this second inequality, I'm going to flip it over, negative 7 fifths is less than or equal to x. So I basically just took this inequality, I flipped it over. This way you can see we still have those same two inequalities, but what we did is we put them together. See, x is greater than or equal to negative 7 fifths, that's this one here. And we have x is less than or equal to 1, that's this one here. So I didn't change anything, I just put them together uh, into like one inequality with that variable in the middle. So now when you go to graph this, pretty straightforward, you just again write it from lowest to highest, the smaller number on the left, larger one on the right, of course zero somewhere here in between, and we can see that x is greater than or equal to negative 7 fifths, okay, and x is less than or equal to 1, and remember and is intersection or overlap, so really what I could do for a final answer is actually just draw it like that, or maybe here I'm going to draw it on the number line so you can see it, it'd be like here, all the way to 1, and it includes all the points in between. So that was an and type. So now we're able to solve those uh, original problems that we uh, listed at the very beginning there. Let's see, so if we're going to do this, first thing I would do is identify this as a greater than. So I know this is or. And when you're solving these absolute value inequality problems, if they're more challenging, like there's more things involved here, the first step is really to get whatever's in the absolute value on one side of the inequality first. That's your first step. Okay, and so then from there, you can identify whether it's an and or an or, and we're going to split it up into two inequalities. We're going to have 3x minus 2 is greater than 7, or we're going to have 3x minus 2 is less than negative 7. See how I flip the inequality and I flip the sign. Then we're just going to solve these guys individually or separately here. And you can see that x is greater than 3. Okay, or we solve the other one, Get the variable by itself on one side, divide both sides by 3, x is less than negative 5 thirds. But remember when it's an or, we can't put these together as like one inequality. We have to list them separately with that word or in between. But we can show our solution graphically on the number line like so. Negative 5 thirds, here's 3, it's greater than 3, or it's less than negative 5 thirds. So less than is smaller, that's why I'm going to the left. Greater than is going to the right. And it's open circle because it's greater than but not equal to. And remember, it includes all of these points, all of these points. But if you were to pick something in between, like maybe a zero, for example, it would not make this inequality true. So that was the first one. Okay, now the second problem, were you able to solve the second one? Now notice that this is a less than or equal to problem. So less than we're thinking and, right? And or intersection. But as far as solving it algebraically, what we're going to do is we're going to separate this into two separate inequalities. Notice we have, just like we see up here, 4x plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. Okay, and 4x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 9. See how I flip the inequality sign? Uh, this is greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to negative 9. You want to flip that inequality sign and then flip the 9 to the negative 9. Now all you have to do is solve these individually. Okay, so subtract 3, divide by 4, reduce that fraction to 3 halves, and then same thing over here, subtract 3, divide by 4, and remember this is an and, and so when it's an and, what does that tell us? It tells us we can put these back together into one, uh, write it as one inequality. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the x is less than or equal to 3 halves, and I'm going to take this second inequality right here, I'm going to flip it over, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, and so now you can see we've put it together as one inequality. So you want that variable in the middle, when you write it like this with these and type, you always want to make sure they're less than symbols, variables in the middle, smaller number on the left, larger number on the right. You don't want this kind of thing where it's a less than or greater than, or like what else could we do? Like uh, maybe something like this, or um, if they're both greater than. If it was they're both greater than, that means you have to flip the whole thing over so that it, they're, the arrows here, the inequality signs are pointing to the left, right? And then the last step is if you want to take it to that next step is you could just graph it on the number line. You could say here's negative 3, 
here's three halves. Uh, it's greater than or equal to negative three, and at the same time, x is less than or equal to three halves. So you can see it's actually in between negative three and three halves. So that's your final answer. Great job if you were able to solve those. And I'll put a video on the screen if you want more examples or more practice or you just want to see me talk through more of these absolute value inequality type problems. If you like my teaching style and you want to learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, you can check out my video courses for sale. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.